says we're live. Oh, oh, oh. Camera's even right up there, so I don't. Right, because that's the one that's recording. Oh, I don't see it. That's why. I I don't see it. Do you see it on your? Can I see the? Do you just just because it's I last time when you said that I seen it said. It's saying live right now, and we're on YouTube. That's the only one we have a subscription in for. Okay, so maybe it's just. Small delay. I have to find it. I don't know. Let's see. Let's go to the lives. And it has those private. And we have those public. Hmm. Have us public in just a moment. Is it the setting that's off? I don't. I'm not sure. Save it right now. And hi everyone. One second, I'm going to Okay, I see it. <sighs> I'm so sorry for the delay. I have my computer down here. <laughs> good evening, everyone. <laughs> or good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. I'm Nova, and from That's So Nova, and we are going to do part two of our sew along with my hair and my computer and everything wants to cooperate at the same time. Um, <laughs> we're going to do part two. So we're going to need pack one and pack two. Um, the pack information is on description page 17. For pack one, we need the strap, swivel hooks, and strap ends. For pack two, we're going to need um, handles, connectors, your either triangle or D-rings, the main panel, and the front pocket. And everyone, I did not cut out my front pockets yet last week. So when I'm when we were ending the live, I was putting all the packets together so that way it'll be easier to grab and go when, during the video process. Or, during this process and sure I have the pattern drop below on my foot and no I did not do it so I I'm using actually another brown color vinyl and it's just going to be really pretty with multiple colors I'm going to invoke my inner Nancy <laughs> if you're in um the Orosa show off group you know who Nancy is her bags are phenomenal and somehow some way she's able to like merge like a lot of fabrics into one one particular thing and it just comes out so elegant so that's why i'm trying to emulate today <laughs> hi hi beverly hey katie hey so country little bond kendall's here too he hello just, there <laughs> okay he, he whispered hello like you would hear <laughs> can everyone hear me okay i'm gonna see what they say did you keep It's really weird watching myself on the screen. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> um, so let's get started. I'm using my Juki 5550N. I get questions on this machine all the time. This is an industrial machine that usually you use in factories for garments. I switched out the feed dogs. Um, I was talking to the person I purchased this from 
his name is Steve from Sewing Gold. Um, I wanted to make garments because I like sewing clothes, but I also wanted to be able to make bags. So when I make garments, I have a, the feed dogs that came with this machine. And when I make bags, I switch them out for a heavier feed dog. Um, but this machine is essentially just like a domestic machine, except it just has its, a, a time, everything's, it's just connected to a bigger power punch. So there's no, um, walking foot or anything that goes with it. It's just a regular machine. That's just an industrial. So what I do before I start with any big project, I try to switch out my needles. I know a lot of people say that and they don't do it, but it can make and break your, your project on some things. And with, um, Alexis's bags, we always have a tendency to make the straps first. And that is going to be like a key function on your bag and you can see every stitch and it's just really important to switch out your um, needle um, get a I have a test fabric right here it's um, two layers of marine vinyl I was checking out the stitches to see if I like that length and how the back looks just little things like that can help tremendously with stitching so let's get started we are going to start with on page 18 using pack one and I have my packs in like little baskets or in little envelopes. Pack one doesn't have a whole lot of um, components where you have a strap and a strap and some like hardware. You don't necessarily need um, ink caps. If you want them, then great. If you don't, then it's okay too. So here's my strap. I drew um, down a line down the middle and I put double sided tape and I'm going to now fold this in on itself and leave roughly uh, one like a one sixteenth or one eighth like gap in between so that when the, the fabric folds on itself it's not going to bunch. A little gap just helps keep the fabric even as possible. I'm using a 9014 needle and I'm using way wax thread in this really pretty, like a chocolate brown. It's not really dark. Um, it's a like real chocolate. <laughs> Hi, Livis. Hi, Karina. From Norway. Take your time. You don't have to use double-sided tape. If your machine's like no bueno on the tape, there are there is like drips wash away tape that is better on the machine and doesn't gum up the needles. Or you can just, you know, let it gum up and then use the alcohol wipe to wipe it down. There's a couple things you can do. I'm gonna grab some clips and I'm just gonna fold it over and clip it. Make sure that the two sides are even. Hello there, Veronica. How are you? Let's see. All right. So I'm going to pull off this practice piece, put it back in my little bucket. So I, I, I rarely try to not waste scraps. I will try to use it as um, a tester for the fabrics I'm going to be sewing with. I'm going to do this at a, a number four stitch. Back stitch at the beginning and we're going one eighth of an inch. Take your time. If you're going to stop, make sure you put your needle in the needle down position. And make sure you just breathe. <laughs> I know top stitching could be intimidating, but you got this.
Hi from California. Hi from Australia. We're just all over the world tonight. This is pretty amazing. Okay, so for, I've worked with this material before and it literally, it, this, these straps will twist really bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it in the same direction. I'm using um, a narrow foot, so I know that in between my my little toe of the machine is exactly one eighth. So I'm going to just let that ride. Hey, Veronica, glad you were able to jump on. We're working on the Ororosa travel bag. Part two. Part two. <laughs> pack one and pack two. Just take your time, breathe. There's no race with top stitching. Just do it at your own leisure and your own pace. Okay. All right. So we're going to do some drawing and whatnot. We're going to fold and encase the raw edges. So we top stitch, we already top stitched the strap one eighth of an inch on both sides. And now we're going to install some hardware. We're going to fold up the hole punch. We're going to fold up the mark where the holes. We're going to fold over by two inches. So you're going to grab your ruler. I just had my hardware. Hold on, there it is. All right, <laughs> we're going to grab our hardware. I'm using Emmeline bags, um, swivel clasp. I really like the way these these particular ones look. I just I love the um, the more oval ones, but this I don't know. These are really nice. And I like them a lot. So we're going to take one side. We're going to fold this over by two inches. So what I'm going to do this is two inches. Just taking my threading my um, strap swivel clasp through the strap and I am putting the ruler down so that way you can see this is one inch two inch and I'm doing it from the end this needs to go up by like a half one fourth of an inch there it goes and I'm marking it where the two is I'm sticking a wonder clip or these are the clips that I got from Lauren Mormon now they're pink and I got the purple ones that are my favorite right now um all right, so on the we're gonna make rivet holes on at three fourths of an inch and one and one half of an inch. So I'm gonna use the half inch side to line it up and draw some some dots. So we're gonna do it at three fourths of an inch. I'm just using a sharpie pen <laughs> and one and one half. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. These I get these Westcott rulers from Amazon, and they're really relatively not expensive. They're pliable. I've accidentally sewn with them. Like I was doing a project, and I have one ruler that has like stitch marks across. But these rulers has they have the one eighth inch all the boxes all the way around. So when a designer's like three, three fourths or one and three eighths, I'm like, I got this because I could just count out the boxes and I'll be straight. <laughs> They're really cheap. Cause at first I was super intimidated cause the notches on, I don't know, some rulers have it. Like this ruler has the one eighth. Yeah, but not all, all rulers don't have that. So three fourths of an inch. And one and one half. Okay. Thank you, Alexis. Let's see. Or let's travel back. Okay. 
my hole punches behind me, Shiva. So we're going to punch out the holes. And do it on this side. Okay, put my thing back so I don't lose it. And I'm gonna get some rivets. And then I'm going to get my rivet press. I got my rivet press from uh, Minkus, Minkus Margo on Etsy. I got it like two, maybe three years ago. And their customer service is really amazing. They have a lot of different dyes. And it's, I don't know, it feels awesome supporting a small business. And my rivets are from, I'm pretty sure they're from MLI. <laughs> Sometimes, occasionally, if I'm, any, I'm out of rivets, I'll use, um, I'll use the one on Amazon. And the one on Amazon in my area is Springfield Tannery. They have really good rivets, too. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put the, these rivets back. I'm going to get my strap ends. The strap ends from a Serial Bag Maker. I'm looking for the screwdriver and it's right on my magnet on my... This would fit, I feel like it's... Oh no, that's pretty cool. There's three, this is a one inch one. I had to keep measuring because I was like, is this for a half an inch? And nope. Let's see how these come out. This is my first time using their one, her one inch. Um, in caps, I usually use like the three fourths of an inch. You know what? I'm going to remove all the screws. So I have this little magnet bowl. I lose screws all the time. I buy extra ones off of Amazon as well. I'm notorious for mis misplacing a screw. So I had a really I have a friend named Jillian, and if you're definitely in this bag making world, you know her bags. Her bags are amazing. And she told me to get a magnet bolt, a magnetic bolt, and it has been a lifesaver since. Let's see. This one's a little weird because usually I could just slide them in and it's not really bulky. So we shall see. It could just be me. Let me see. I'm gonna smush this down just a little bit and see if that works. If not, then I can order strap ins before the we finish the bag. Ta da! It worked like magic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm going to take these screws. You know, I've seen some people even have like um, these electric screwdriver, and I was like, okay, one day I'm gonna definitely have to try that. You could put um, a drop of turn turn lock or um, some kind of blue uh, fray check in, so that way you can secure. I never had any of the screws shift, so but I hear it can happen, and if it's happened to you. That's one way to prevent it. I like how big, I kind of like how big these strap ends are, I'm not gonna lie. I did measure it twice, I was like, hmm, is this for a one inch? Cause look at, it's so much wider, but it's meant for a one inch strap or up to probably a one and one fourth strap. That happens a lot too.
If you don't have a magnetic bowl, if you have like a ring of some sort, you can always put it on the table and it won't, they won't move around that way too. Inside of the hole, a set of scissors too. Yeah, like the ones that are connected to the magnet. <laughs> I'm just taking a, just a pair of, I don't know the word for this is. I want to call it crimpers, but I know it's like pliers. It's pliers. Needle nose pliers. Yeah, and I'm just pressing, I'm pushing it down. I got it because the color is blue. I'm not going to lie. My other one's pink. I just get tired of seeing like black or yellow. I'm just like, ugh. Those at Joanne's actually in the jewelry section. Okay. If these little screws want to cooperate, we can be friends. And then we're going to start with pack two. Literally, the screw does not want to cooperate with me. <laughs> Okay. Put this magnet bowl across the room. Oh. Yeah. Oh no, the bowl was saved by the scissors. <laughs> okay. But did everything fly out? Of everything it? else flew out. It's okay. Thinking that you need it? No, no. Yeah. So we have this, our shoulder strap, and we're going to put this away, and then we're going to start with pack two. We're going to grab the connectors. Remember, they're the ones that have that little piece of Decoville light at the top, like, down. We drew a line. You probably can't see mine because it's pink. And then we are going to grab some double-sided tape. When I'm like watching the side profile of the live over here, I realize I do a lot of hand gestures. I'm definitely like my mom. <laughs> if she's watching, she's probably smiling. My mom does like a lot of, when she's talking, it's just like all these hand gestures and you're just watching her hands. I guess like mother like daughter scenario. <laughs> all right, so we're going to put the double sided tape. We're going to Make sure it sticks on. These, this side's gonna butt right up against the other, so you don't have to worry about having um, a space because we're going to have them line right up to each other. And then do the same for the other. And we're going to top stitch these connectors three eighths of an inch going on both sides. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes when I want the glue to, from the strap to stay on, I just rub it against something so that the glue can adhere even more. It may not work, or just something weirdly I do. <laughs> so we're going to go over to my sewing machine. We're going to sew a three inch, three eighths of an inch. This weird little mark is three eighths of an inch, of an inch. Let's see. I'm just going to take my other strap and feed it in right behind it. Gonna go over two stitches and go down three eighths of an inch on the other side. Okay. 
And I'm just going to bring the other one over. Trim the threads. All right. We're going to run um, double sided tape on. I'm going to place a double sided tape two inches down from the short ends. I'm just making sure I have the double sided tape where the deck of a light is. So on the wrong side, I'm going to do two inches in. Grab some double-sided tape. Then the two inch rule. We're going to grab our connector uh, or, or try eagle connectors. I like these better because then it, the, the strap doesn't continuously turn. That is, I, I despise when that happens. And we're going to fold over the short half inch of an inch at one and a half inches. So I'm just Right there, press down the side tape, and I'm going to bring this over here. Okay, and you just want to make sure they match up. I'm gonna check, double check our person because I don't want those straps to be all messy. Okay, let's see if my straps will stay. Then we're gonna get a double sided tape, double sided tape, and we're going to put it on the opposite ends. It's three four, don't go up three fourths of an inch. So you can make a mark if you wish, you can, so that way you have, if you're a more of a visual person, draw three fourths of an inch and just put a a little line there so you know where to stop the double sided tape. Let's put it down. All right, so we're going to hop on to page 20. We're going to put these, we're going to start working on the handles. We're going to wrap them. And we are going to draw a line that is two inches in the middle. I'm just using a blue pen so it, it can show up better because I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And we're going to put double sided tape on here and we're going to have like that little bit of gapage because these straps are going to get fold over so just it could be like one and one sixteenth or to one to one eighth it's just so that way the when it when it folds on each other the bulk of the inside 
will be evenly distributed. So this is going to sound weird, right? When I get my double-sided tape from Waywack, it has a different smell than the ones I get from Amazon. It, I, I can't explain it. It's a weird thing, but <laughs> off of the smell of the double-sided tape, I know if it's Waywax or not. And I know that sounds weird, and maybe I spend way too much time with double-sided tape. It, 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 has, so <laughs> it has like a weird glue smell, but it's like not bad. I can't. It's a. It's I don't I don't sniff double sided tape. Oh, yeah. I just I felt like I should express that because maybe I'm not alone. I'm not, and other people will be like, yeah, way wax tape smells differently. Yeah, it smells so. Good. It does. <laughs> Every time I get a new like all the packs of double sided tape, I do like. You, you just said it again. I know, but that's not sniffing. It's just like appreciation of way wax tape. I'm just. Throwing that out there. <laughs> so, uh, it smells differently than when I get other dubs that I take from other companies. Just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> Probably not alone. And like when you rip the double sided tape up, like it has like a uh, fragrance you can smell. <laughs> it's not the double sided tape, people. I know I'm weird. Okay. <laughs> does have a smell though like if you are around it enough you just like oh, okay like that's like children's glue you know what it smells like <laughs> okay Katie can you like give me some redemption because I know you probably have way whack everyone has way whack tape <laughs> or wow whack I'm literally I'm gonna call up there tomorrow I'll be like how do you say your name and I'm going to pop some clips in here and then get the other one because we're going to so, do very similar like the connectors. We're going to do three eighths of an inch in the middle. We're going to do Aura Rosa signature handles, which these handles, I'm not going to lie. I almost incorporated in every single bag because they look so elegant. She like she created a really good handle. Stop laughing at it. It does smell. I'm laughing because everybody else is laughing. Okay. <laughs> it has a smell. I'm not lying. It's like different. And it takes off my nail polish. If you ever, if you don't have nail polish remover, just get some double sided shade. <laughs> it, okay. I'm not. It's, it's like a real thing. Uh huh. It is. It, the green. She's using it right now. <laughs> yeah, it just, it's a weird smell. Like, I can't explain. It just, it doesn't smell bad. Like, you know how, like, children's white Elmer glue doesn't smell bad, but, like, any other glue, you'd be like, oh, it's so strong, but is it because we used it as a kid and arts and crafts that we're used to the smell and, and it's, like, memory? But, yeah, maybe it's like, oh, my favorite bags are used to this tape maybe that's it i don't know <laughs> watch somebody from wawa call me and be like our uh our tape doesn't have a distinguished smell <laughs> i'm like yeah it does buddy <laughs> all right so we have these we're going to sew them three-eighths of an inch down i'm grabbing my little tails Now everybody on Facebook would be like, yeah, I just need to know that Shinova girl, she likes the way double-sided tape smell. <laughs> but just the particular brand. I got some from Sprinkle Leather and like, it was, it wasn't as sticky. I can't explain it. My, it didn't come up my machine, but it like immediately lifted. I was like, well, that sucks. I learned a lesson. <laughs> Cause like whenever I shop 
at a fabric store, whatever fabric store it is, from like fabric.com to fabric candy shop, you just any store, I try to see if they have double sided tape. And one day um, I was looking through Springfield leather because they have, they do have some really pretty faux leathers. And I seen double sided tape. I was like, hmm, I'll get this faux leather and I'll get double sided tape. Yeah. Not a fan of their double sided tape. And like when I was taking it off, it would just rip. And I'm like, huh, I'm not going to throw it away. So I ha every time I used it, I was just like side eyeing it a little bit. That's when I noticed. Because there's like no, there's nothing on the tape says wow wax. So I'm like, not even the inside rim. So one day I noticed that this tape had a unique smell. <laughs> Okay, well, well here's the thing. I'm in the sewing room for a long time by myself, so I start noticing things that maybe people don't typically notice. <laughs> now everybody's smelling their tape, right? It's a weird thing. <laughs> Just like the machine, like, how do you say an old sticker? This is my 3 8 of an inch, and I know just because it's a mark, you know? Mm -hmm. I see people using markers. Mine's is this sticker that is, the pill just won't fall off. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's cool. <laughs> and I have magnets. Like, I can be, I can legit go like, oh, this is my 3 8 of an inch mark. I just don't use it. But I'll use it for this for the sake of this video. It gets in wow. the way. When you do top stitching, you're like, see, now it's making a weird sound. <laughs> Magnets, man. <laughs> so I'm gonna stop with the needle down, hop over one, two stitches. I'm gonna bring my strap. I wonder where doesn't like this sound. Oh, it's because the oil that I have on that. Hold on, you'll stop making the sound as soon as I clean it after this. Hopefully. Because <laughs> the squeaky is not cute. Yeah, that magnet was like, there's like all this oil on it. Oh, it's from, um, this, there's like sewing thread oil that you can put on the machines to make the, the thread not like fray or frizz. It can get everywhere. I don't think she's going to like it. Because that is... Super annoying. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see what I have over here. I have a scrap of something that I All right. All right. So we did the two inch, I mean, the three eighths of an inch all the way down the middle. We're going to now do some measurements on the handles. We are going to make markings from, we're gonna do seven and a half and six and a half. And I'm getting, I'm using this pen that I got from So Whatever, it's a Tandy leather pen inside, but the cap is nice and like a blue gray, so I like pretty things. <laughs> six and a half. We're going to do it on the opposite side. Okay. 
Yeah, I first did this bag on the Esperanza and then the Erica, and then it just became part of like my everyday straps. I know it's it's just the way it looks is so high end, so lush. All right. Then we're going to start with the opening on one side at the starting at the seven and a half line. And we're not going to back stitch. We're going to go one eighth of an inch across up to the other seven and a, seven and a half. I can't talk today. The other um, seven and a half mark, and then across, and then up, and then across. And then we're going to pull out the threads and tie them off. This gives it where there's no back stitching, there's no knots. It looks really nice. So we're going to start. Just breathe. And it's not going to go away, is it? No. I'll change the foot after this pass. Maybe it's Flip. Start with the needle down and then you pivot. Needle down, pivot again. Sandra has a question. For her Catalina, she used regular all-purpose thread. Should she be using something stronger for this bag? I you um, This is a polyester all-purpose thread, 40 weight from Waywac, and that's what I'm using. Um, I used Guterman on the Doctor Who bag that I got from Joann's, and it came out fine. I just, my uh, rule of thumb is have it make sure it's all-purpose polyester and not cotton a cotton is strong but cotton i it's weird if, if you're using synthetic materials i think you should use synthetic um threads if that makes sense because i know there's a lot of bag makers that use all cotton but they um they're also probably making um the bags like with tulip pink fabric or Allison glass and everything's like all cotton. Right now we're using vinyl for the handles, so I just feel like it needs the same thing. Like it needs to have synthetic, all right, synthetics like all purpose polyester. So I'm cutting long tails. And what I'm gonna do is we have to open this up a little bit and I'm going to grab a needle you get a needle or um, I'm using a pen and I'm just I went through the first loop and I'm pulling all the strings to the inside <laughs> and then I'm going to take all the strings and I'm going to make a knot. Hey, Alessandra, how you doing? You from Brazil. Ooh. So I definitely think you can use as long as it's all all purpose that I think it should be fine. Hopefully some other people in the chat has have used it. I did use all Gutermans because they're all purpose thread and I used it in my first bag. So we're done with one strap. I'm going to change out this foot because the squeaking is not, I just can't, I don't, <laughs> noises. I'm replacing the foot from the narrow foot to I do have a Teflon foot. I thought I just had it. Oh, it's right here. Dash. Okay. So I'm going to 
It's never too far away for me. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna go to where the opening is. Don't go on the opposite side because then you can't pull your threads. Have long tails. We're gonna go one eighth of an inch. Oh yeah, <laughs> not that annoying squeak sound, okay. it's not a race not a, just take your time breathe and when you have to stop stop at a back stitch uh, on a with the needle down not on a back stitch go across I'm going to go over one more stitch. For this machine, my machine is really weird. So like, my friend who has one that's similar, she can use 70 weight on this machine. My machine, whenever I use 70 weight, I don't know if it's like, like, like in my head or whatever, my machine hates 70 weight. I can have 70 weight in the top and 40 in the bottom, and I get a lot of skip stitches, nesting, the whole nine yards. But if I put 40 weight thread from Saba or Guterman in my machine, it acts like the best thing ever. Let's see, long tails. All right, so let me show you again. So we have our tails one on one side and one on the other side. We're going to bring them in to the, I had a really good, you can use a stiletto. You're just grabbing just grabbing the, the threads and you're pulling them into the inside. And then we're going to knot it off like three knots. One. And then you're gonna close, snip close, and the little knot you can just kind of tuck it in, and you're good to go. Ta. <laughs> so now we're going to put um, on the back side DST that is six inches. I draw everything out. It just Makes things easier. Because on the other side, we have a line that goes to six and a half. This just helps keep everything out of uh, your stitching. Right. Grabbing my double sided tape, not side eyeing it. Okay. 
Hey, make sure you're staying hydrated, having something nice to drink. I have sweet tea by me. It should be water, but my husband just made it today or yes, last night. So I wanted to get some for all the kids too. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna grab our main panel and the main panel um, with the cell phone cutout. I mean, that has a wide cutout. No, why you? Come on, Nova. So we have this beautiful brown and we are going to measure two inches from the bottom and draw a line. All right. And we're going to find our centers. Right here. I usually, before I do any pieces, I usually do like a small little V snip in the bag each way. You're going to position your six inch ruler that's wide. So, three inches on one side, three inches on the other. And we're going to put our straps. And if you notice in the pattern, the the edge that is naturally folded in is positioned inwards. So, I mean, you can do it either way. There's no hard or fast rule. It just I like the way this bag looks, so I'm trying to emulate it a little bit. I'm just going to push down. It's three inches on each side. The lines that we drew to find our centers, I'm just lining it up with my ruler. All right. We are now going to stitch up to the six and a half line, then down. And we could you could back stitch in the beginning and nobody will see those stitch. Big scissors. All right. One eighth of an inch. Fold this over what I'm sewing. Trim threads. I'm still out of four stitch lane. are going to do the same thing 
on the other main panel piece. Just put this one aside real quick. Two inches. Find your centers. Sometimes when I'm doing this and I feel like it's shifting, I'll just pop a clip on wherever the place I think is shifting too much. I'm drawing a line center, drawing a line on the center for the two inch mark and then on the bottom. Grabbing my six inch ruler, putting the three lining up with Marks. Grabbing a nice strap. Get this little tape off. Making sure everything's still lined up and I didn't lose anything. Making sure the strap is not twisted. Okay. One eighth of an inch. We're going to repeat the steps we just did. Remember, just breathe. You got this. Stop, put the needle down, and you pivot. So, like, sometimes when I'm doing straps like this, you don't. I don't cut the thread. Sometimes I just bring the thread over to the next one and I cut it at the end. I don't know if it's lazy or not, but I feel like it's time efficient, but I can't be quoted on that. <laughs> when you stop, when you do the needle down, just wait, feel like Pull it all the way down until it starts clicking up, and then sew. Trim my threads. Then we're going to grab our connector. We're going to punch holes. I'm just going to do it all at one time. Is this the same? I'm just going to draw a six and a half inch line on here. I'm going to my so it's at the same level. I know there's questions about um, hiding uh, the zipper thing. When we get to that part of the luggage case, which is coming up, I will explain. I have actually, I did have a piece of vinyl that went over so you didn't see the strap ends. It's, 
you really are not going to see them as much if you paint the ends of your straps that can help make the like a distraction where you can't notice them i i understand uh when we were testing it a lot there were some people that did it i know i did it on my second bag it can create a little bit another layer of bulk so if your machine can handle it by all means go for it if your machine can't no one's going to see the end of the strap I, when you open it up they're just going to be amazed that there's two zippers there that you can open up and use Butting them right up next to each other, making that six and a half inch mark. I always have to like put the cap on my Tandy pins. I don't know if this happens anywhere else because I've been noticing it. I live in Maryland. If I don't put the cap on the Tandy pins, they dry out overnight and they won't be able to use. I can't use them and then I get super frustrated. I don't know if that happens to anybody else. My um, my iron-on ones, no matter what brand I get, they seem not to work after like a week or two. First I thought I had a fabric goblin <laughs> or like something in my room that was distracting it, but I don't know if it's the humidity I'm not too sure. That's why you see a lot of Sharpie pens when I'm working. <laughs> I'm thinking it's the humidity. I blame it for my frizzy hair. So, you know, I'll just mark it. Say, hey, that's what's wrong with my pens too. All right, so we're gonna mark some places for rivets. Okay, so the first rivet is back on page 22. We're going to, um, on figure 30, 37, we're gonna make punch a hole right above the stitching. So I'm going to mark it in the center, which it, because of our um, stitching, we can see the holes. Great, so it's right above the line on both of them. And actually, all three of them should know the hello. All right. Now there is I'm going to grab my hole puncher. And I'm just gonna maneuver. I actually, when it's not laid, I usually use a drill that I hammer in. It just makes it easier and it's not like in awkward positions where you're like scrunching up your fabric. Okay, I'm going to get my rivets. And just make sure when you get your rivets, they're flush with the back. If the post is too high, it cannot set correctly. And that's why some rivets like pop off. It happens, it could be a bad set or whatever. I like to put all my um, rivets on and then hole punch them, not hole punch them, but then put the rivets, like set them all at the same time. Because I have been known to like, oh yeah, I set that rivet and then at the end of the bag, no, 
No, I did not. <laughs> I'm filling these colors together, I'm not going to lie. That one does not want to work together. Okay, maybe it's the post on this one. All right. So I'm using, I believe, the small on MLI. these bad boys you can feel like a small like click when you do it like I, it's like a two click part and then I'm like oh I set the rivet right without lifting I have accidentally hit my face with this lever one time when I first started getting because I was like putting all my body weight on it and so when it bounced back this part just hit me in the face and I'm pretty sure I had a concussion <laughs> And then I was also crushing the post. Okay. All three are set. We're going to grab our pockets and our pocket lines. Here's one I came up with a different color. It's like a camel color because I ran out of the other one, but I thought, hey, it looks good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put these. We're going to sell these at three eighths of an inch. Stitch at the beginning. Um, you also can also draw out the three eighths of an inch. That that helps. You try to still sew in sour patches. <laughs> well, that's what happened when I tried to pick up your pen <laughs> that just fell. No, I'm sticking to what I said. <laughs> oh man. All right. I'm trimming um, down the seam allowance in using a pinking shear. And then I'm just gonna finger press this and I cut into my stitches in here. Okay, hold on. When you cut into your stitches, you can sew around it like one eighth of an inch, but you just do it even 
or the pocket will look weird. <laughs> That's why you clip, you know, this is the catch all side. You know, repaint, don't cut the seam, don't cut into the second row of stitching. Now I'm going to finger press. If you have, if you're working with can cotton or canvas, then you can press with your machine. If you're working with vinyl or waterproof canvas and, or something else that cannot be ironed, you just have to finger press. You can seam roll with a roller as well. And what I do is I'm gonna pop some clips in. So when we top stitch this, keep it nice and neat. Put this back over here. We just press out all the curves. Okay. So we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. Take your time. Take the curve slow and just breathe. Hey Veronica, no, we we'll, will not be finishing this bag tonight. This is part two of a four-part series. Five part, the first five one. part series. Sorry. Yeah, so we're doing um, we're gonna do we're doing packet one and two today. We're on pack two, so we have our top stitching. Um, this is an awesome place to have your label. You, this is just one of those places you can have it. So I'm going to take my label. If you have a cotton or a woven one, this you can put it in different places. You can have it right in the middle. You can have it on top of the bag. Um, you know what? I'm going to put it in a different place so I can show you. So we did one pocket. Let's do the second. Flip it. Three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to back stitch. To make the bag faster because you're going on a, um, a trip or whatever i do have um the aura rosa playlist uh for this bag just by itself it's for it's for videos and you can watch it or just watch parts of it that you need assistance if you are like hey after watching your video i still have questions the live might be better for you because you can ask a question and i or alexis or somebody else in the group that's awesome will um will help assist you too. I think that's why I like lives because there sometimes I have questions on a bag and if like the designer's there or someone that has made the bag multiple times is there, then I'm like, oh cool, I have the opportunity to 
ask the question that I need. And I'm finger pressing this and then just rubbing my fingers in between to make sure this nice and crisp. You can use like a, like a boning tool. Or non -blo I use a lot of chopsticks. Or like you see with the first one, I did just use my fingers. It, was, it came out okay. So now we're going to do the same thing. Top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. I can't believe tomorrow is going to be August the 1st. I literally am like, where did July go? <laughs> but I'm not going to lie. I'm like, fall is my favorite season, except the beginning of fall when like Rad Week is out because man, that place, that wreaks so much havoc on my sinuses and allergies. Um, but fall is my favorite season. So I'm like, yeah, come on fall. <laughs> Let's do it. Also, the kids will be back in school, so it's like the most magical time of the year for me. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, a hundred percent. I want to make. I was trying to get all black cork for my father-in-law. Because, what is he again? His fraternity. Alpha Phi Alpha Incorporated. Oh, so that particular color is like black and old gold. And I really want to make him a travel bag. Because this man is always on the move. Like, he loves, he, he travels more than anyone else I know. So I was like, this might be a really great carry-on for him. But I want, I want it to, the black to look really, really good. And I'm also trying to find, like, a gold cork. And I want to use cork or leather I haven't decided I know he would appreciate the leather but I feel like the bag would be heavy and he had like shoulder surgery but so it's something that I'm always constantly hyper aware of <laughs> so I'm thinking cork might be the best thing so I'm going to grab the grab the the main piece that doesn't have the foam pocket and we're going to place one of these beautiful pieces on just lining everything up the fabric we're going to stitch this face stitch like one eighth of an inch all the way around Yeah, definitely have to like the person. But I really think this would make an awesome gift for like so many different occasions. Like, oh, you graduated school. Here's your first travel bag. Um, this could be a good baby bag for when you have your kids and throw stuff in. You can modify it for it. Or definitely a baby bag. I actually think it would be great. I'm sending the kids to grandma's house. Here's all their clothes in this bag. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> And I'll put something cool on it, like, to grandma. <laughs> this is the to grandma bag. So we're gonna we're gonna base this in place at one eighth of an inch, and really follow the one eighth of an inch because you don't want to like look, binding takes a lot out of this vinyl. So base. It's funny, I had 
when I, during testing, I had no idea the beast is what this is called in our group in. <laughs> the beast was this big until I started sewing this panel. I was like, holy moly. This is a big, big bag. Oh, so where I'm picking, I'm going to put my, um, my sign on this one. I seen someone else in our group do it and I'm just going to borrow their style. I'm making a center mark. I have a circle um, logos and I just going to figure out the prongs. Yeah, you need a little bit of force there. Yeah, that I need to put another blade in. Yes, I bend down. I could bend down the prawns. So I was like, you could bend down the um, prawns of the of a uh, harbor. And I was like, yes. Sometimes I can rip duct tape. This is the electrical tape that I got from uh, Serial Bag Maker, and it's one of my favorite things to put over hardware because it just sticks. I don't know. I have like maybe a bad luck thing with duct tape. I have no idea. I see everybody else's duct tape just sticking, and mine's just not. And I'm like. I, I'm going to try the Gorilla Tape. Someone told me that, but I don't know. It just, I have to, there's different things now. But this electrical tape is really cool. All right, so we're done with that one. We're going to, now we're going to do, oh yeah. All right, we're going to do the luggage keeper. Now the luggage keeper part, you need to really make sure if your fabric is directional. The first step tells you to draw the line at the bottom of the print. So we're going to get the luggage keeper lining. Move all this stuff over here. And hopefully it won't fall. Don't fall. Okay. We're gonna get the lining and we're gonna draw from one edge, we're gonna draw three fourths of an inch. And we're using a permanent pen. Just to be sure. Kathleen from Texas says that uh, she's working with the courage to make this bag. It's a stunner. You could totally do it. I the one I don't believe there's I honestly don't believe there's like beginning advance or whatever like i believe that anyone can make any bag if they have the time for it like i've i've seen some bag makers out there like look at look at the designer she does not have a domestic machine and she turns out some of the most beautiful bags i i see across facebook instagram all this and it's just take knowing your machine taking the time and realize it's not a race you're not competing with anyone except yourself so take your time and I totally think you can make it. It seems intimidating. It's just, it's bigger than what we normally make. But once you make it, you're going to want to pop out a million of them. <laughs> um, so we're going to draw, we draw the three fourths of inch on the lining. And then we're going to grab the exterior. I'm going to just put this lining right there on the side. And we're going to draw a line three fourths of an inch from one long edge the one that has um where the zip the interfacing is one inch away right, we're going to do three eighths of an inch on one 
on the one that has the one inch. Man, my pants go dead so fast. I didn't like three fourths of an inch on one side, three fourths of an inch on the other. Someone needs to come out with like some really cool pin sets for fabric, like for like bag makers or whatever that need to write permanent lines or whatever that doesn't bleed through on the fabric. All right. So we have that. We're going to take on figure 50, we're going to take, um, we're going to lay your lining keeper right sides up. And clip the 19 inch zipper. One inch. I just had that zipper. Hi, Melissa. I just, how did you go? Okay, so it's it. All right, so here's my 19 inch zipper. I'm gonna separate it. And <laughs> We're gonna thank you. We're gonna take our um, we're gonna lay our luggage keeper lining right side up, and you're in your workspace. You're gonna take the 19 inch zipper and clip it raw side, wrong side, right sides up. We're gonna clip one of the 19 inch zipper zipper tapes matching raw edge to raw edge and right sides up. I'm gonna base this at one eighth of an inch on it. Okay, and then we're going to turn this 180 and take the luggage exterior right sides and clip along the edge with the one inch gap from the stabilizer. So that's the one with the three eighths of an inch mark because that's what we're going to be sewing. Whoa, 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 hold on. I need to double check myself. The shipper, I love how she has check yourself. Like the, the zipper should be at the bottom. So we're going to do three eighths of an inch. So we clip zippers on the bottom. So right sides together. We're going to trim one to one eighth of an inch. Okay. 
Then we're going to get some double sided tape and put it where the lines are drawn. Remove the paper backing from the middle exterior down and stick it to the DST. Okay, hold on. I think I did something wrong. Weapon materials will create the clean exterior. I feel like I did something wrong. Yeah, I did something wrong. Because this is supposed to, when it matches to this, the zipper tape should be out. But this, sh wait, no, Shinova, you didn't do something wrong because you're looking at the interior, uh, the interior versus the exterior. This goes down, and this goes right here, so we have a nice clean finish. Okay, continue, carry on. Don't doubt yourself. Learn from my mistakes. You got this, Nova. You can't. I know. I'm just gonna, breathe. Just breathe. I wish I had my Dark Vader's shirt that said that right now. That's like my favorite. All right. I just need to put those that I tape down on here. Why am I always looking for a double side tape? And that's why we were supposed to put it right here, Shana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't look at the lining part when you think you're doing something wrong. <laughs> To you can flip this part, but my machine doesn't really mind double sided tape too much. Thank goodness, because I need to just stick this down. That I don't know. Um, right now, this waterproof canvas that I have is not like sticking to um, the double sided tape, super weird. Weirder stuff happens though. Let's do this. Okay. 
Okay. We're going to do um, a one eighth of an inch on both sides to top stitch. I'm at a four stitch lead. Okay, and we're going to do a one inch of an eight, one eighth of an inch on the other side. Just going to roll this, make sure all this the seam lays flat as possible. Sorry, I'm just like totally sucker punch the camera. It's okay. That was not active. Okay. <laughs> you guys did not get punched at home, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch as well. reading this pattern I was automatically intimidated by the shoe pocket right because it's like some kind of magic um, <laughs> that Alexis just came up with but actually when I look back the part I, the, the long, well, part I had the most trouble with was installing this and it, once you read all the instructions it goes really relatively easy the shoe I promise you is a, it's more easier than it looks so we have everything finished on the left part of the luggage keeper. We're going to grab our exterior part, the one that has a U, and we're going to take the other zipper we're going to do some lines. We're going to do one and a half inches from the bottom. And I know this is where I've seen in the chat earlier, people have questions on this part right here. So, all right. If you're choosing to have another piece of fabric right now, this is, this is where you could do it. This is like the place that you could do it. You can have like a piece of um, vinyl or waterproof canvas, or even you, you can get really cool. If you, you're trying to keep everything out of your semi lines, if you have like twill tape that's like the same color, you can have it going across as long as it's between these two lines, then um, between this line and this line, it will work out and it won't be shown. It, or you could do it after you put the zipper, the, the we lay down the zipper tape, but realistically, you don't really have to do it. And you, it adds more bulk than it you need. If you, really are bothered by it. you can some people in our group um edge coat it the ends of these so that way that they look clean and finished you can do a, a cap like so what i do is i take extra fabric that is like this i'm trying to see when i want a scrap i can't find a scrap that's hilarious okay hold on so what i'm gonna take cut out this so i take let's say you have a scrap you can do like if this is one inch you can fold this over onto this and then your raw edges are enclosed and you don't have nothing to worry about. That to me is the second option over edge painting or fabric markers. If you don't want this to be shown, you can do that. Um, or you do, you can place the fabric over it, but just keep in mind, you're adding another layer that has to get bind. So we're gonna, we draw, we draw a one and a half inch mark and below the drawn line, run um, double-sided tape, one eighth of an inch. My double-sided tape, this one is not from Wayback. <laughs> and uh, 
it unravels really weird. <laughs> so I'm just, I roll with it and like, okay, sera, sera, like I just, <laughs> there's no, there's nothing I can do about that. <laughs> so I'm going to remove my double sided tape, um, the pill, and then we're going to put the zipper tape right here. Um, hold, okay, we're going to remove the double sided tape. We're going to stick down the edge of the raw side. First of all, so I'm going to find my center. This will help. You'll see in just a moment. So just find your center, raw side. So we're going to stitch this down. Um, so the zipper to detail at one fourth of an inch. Um, back stitch at the beginning and end. My zipper foot, when it's not on the narrow and it's like the regular foot, if I just go follow the line, the edge of this foot to this, and it's exactly one fourth of an inch. But if you are at home and you have a domestic machine and you have like a needle positioner, this is the time you can you can move your needle to left or right, whatever you're however you're sewing. Alright. Trim the threads. We're gonna sew the zipper up so it's easy to zip. We're gonna fold it over and we're gonna sew at one eighth of an inch. And this helps in case the raw edges of the zipper in back stitch a few stitches we're we're now we're doing one eighth of an inch towards the edge of the zipper not where the zipper teeth is because then you it will be not functional I'm kind of like tugging at the zipper um, teeth while I'm sewing just to make sure I'm trying to do as even as possible. All right. It's all pretty now. I'm not cutting my zipper tails yet. Don't your zipper um, little tails on the edge. We're gonna grab the, the lining pocket. And zipper bowls. I'm using zipper bowls from Zipper Valley. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'm matching the zipper tape because we cut it Saying I'm zip matching them. Um, I'm going to thread the first one on. Hopefully. I think my side is kind of frayed. Okay, I might do it on the other side because this one, this side is super frayed. I should have burnt it, like the ends better off the lighter. Sometimes it's a hit or miss with me.
It's funny, I put on zippers all day long, but then when I get filmed. Every single time. It's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to try this one more time on this side. Why are you acting like this today? Yeah, I'm talking to my zipper tape. That's probably not healthy. <laughs> All right. I might have to do some shenanigans. It's like on too. It's just not moving. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to trim the teeth on this side to make sure they line up the same on the other side. So I bring the zipper pull all the way to the other one. And click that into place. All right. Sorry for the long delay. Half the video is going to be putting it on zipper tape. That's why it's really important to burn your edges because this, when you're mixing with all these zippers, they just get everywhere. So now we're going to, our zipper pulls are on. We're going to. Trim away the excess from the luggage. So I'm going to bring this onto this side. I'm going to pop a few clips in there. Just make sure it stays. And pop it on again. Same on this side. Trim. We are now going to base the sides at one eighth of an inch. Okay. I really like these colors together. Okay, so when you open this up, you see the bottom. So where I told you before, if you put like a small strip of like uh, a vinyl, you could have done it where I showed you in the beginning before we did the zipper thing, but you really can't notice because this just goes over a trolley. And when, when the zipper pocket is closed and you're putting stuff in it, you're not going to you're not opening this up and be like, hey, what does the zipper line look like? You're going to be fine. <laughs> All right. So we just, we trim that. Then we're going to put 
some markings for a rivet. We're gonna go one and a half inches away Half, let me show you we're one and a half inches away from here the top and three eighths of an inch down Okay, we're going to punch a rivet. I'm just going to triple check my measurements. I just always triple check. It just, it's easier that way. my phone. <laughs> super, super loud. Okay. All right. Hole puncher, hole puncher, hole puncher. We're almost done with this first part. You guys did a lot of work today. So I have to squish my bag to put the rivet holes in it, but you can, if you have a, a punch, like the manual one you do with the mallet, you just Oh my god, I love that one because it's just like you're not squishing your bag. <laughs> then we get two rivets. Put it through. get my my press to set yeah to set the rivets if the they don't fly everywhere the back popped off rivets are set and then there's an optional hole that you can put right above the the line up here I did I I actually really like this option I think it's awesome to have extra security now when you do it you're not going to put any rivets in it that's going to be one of our last steps when we're done with the bag but it's pretty cool uh, so you just punch the hole because you're going to need to guide in that last step, one of the last steps. And I'm going to grab my other piece and make the marks and punch the holes. Okay, 
we still have a little work to do on this one. So we're now on page 31. We're going to grab our foam pocket lining, lining piece. I'm just going to tuck these handles out of the way. <laughs> we're going to clip this right sides together. If we clip there, up here, and we're going to sew this at three eighths of an inch, right sides together. Again, you could draw your three eighths of an inch line out and it can be extremely helpful. Sorry, my machine was like, guess what? You didn't hold your threads. So I'm gonna punish you by giving you multiple threads. Okay, sorry about that. Back stitch at the beginning of it. Make sure all raw edges are together. I need to go back over there and skip the stitch. I will go back once I am done. So I'm gonna trim these threads. And see, I had like a skip stitch over there, so I'm just going to go back. Okay. We're going to trim this down to one eighth of an inch. Uh, Pinking shears really do help at this. You could do, if you don't have painting shears, you could do little V-notch notches. So you can help these the curve. I'm going to take the cut. I'm just going to finger press. I'm going to Bring this down over here, clipping it. So we're going to um, top stitch this down. I'm just, there we go. Move the pieces as much as you want um, to get the kind of results you want. Just take your time. Man, I have brown threads everywhere. We're going to grab the backing and we are going to clip. Okay, 
Okay, so we're now going to sew this at three eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna we're just going down, across, and up again. Just move it, maneuver your back, your back will be fine. You just squish it. one eighth hole placement from here and then here so just you could break your stitching so that you could jump to one section to another it just holds it in place where the material is you could if you wanted to you could sew across it's not going to hurt if it because it, it's all going to be part of inside uh the, the binding but We have our luggage keeper, our cell phone pocket, and that's it. Next Sunday, we're going to do pack three and four. That one's a little bit shorter, but the steps are super important. So we have, I'm kind of liking this color combination a lot. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. This is pretty amazing to me. <laughs> um, so we have, um, we have our pockets. I sew two pockets when I only needed one. I just realized that. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> so we have our, our you zipper. You never have too many pockets. Uh, no, it's the pocket. I sew two of the front pocket when I only needed one. So it, yeah, it's okay. I can use it for another project. I promise you. Um, so we, we have our one of our main panels has a luggage zipper. The other one has the pocket, and the second pocket does not exist. Doesn't exist. <laughs> so we're done with tonight. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat. Myself or Alexis or another person that is knowledgeable and that wants to share will be able to assist you. I'm kind of responsive. <laughs> I like to respond to people. So until then, till next Sunday, I hope everyone has a great day. If you could like, comment, and subscribe, it would help my channel out tremendously. And happy sewing, everybody. Bye.